In search of a rival, Beerus came to Earth, with Yulong being the person fated to be Beerus' rival. Will his full power be enough to impress Beerus? We'll be covering that more in this 8th part of What If Frieza Was Good. Yulong showcases his newest form. Beerus finds the green hue interesting. Yulong actually chose this color himself. He kind of liked it. It felt very serene, to say the least. This form is Jade Yulong. The reason I chose this color and name is because his namesake is the Jade Dragon. As discussed in part 1, we'll be using that for this form. This is essentially his equivalent to the golden form, just a different color. Since apparently Frieza was able to choose the color of the golden form, so Yulong chose the color of this one. He almost went with golden in honor of Goku, but he'd rather do his own thing and make his own form. This way, it's more unique. The two start fighting. Of course, Beerus is way ahead of Yulong, but still, Beerus is impressed with his strength. He really is powerful and definitely is the strongest mortal that Beerus knows. Granted, he's still holding back, but hey, he has to do that against everybody. He tells Yulong for what it's worth, this is the least he's ever held back against a mortal. Still holding back a lot, though. And he's proud of this. Eventually, he'll return to Earth, but for now, he's going to go back to his planet. So Yulong doesn't immediately go there to train. Although Beerus does say he would like Yulong to come to his planet the next time he comes here. It'll be a win-win for the both of them. Beerus will have a rival, and Yulong will have a rival, because obviously he's been looking for someone strong to challenge. And he agrees to this, but he does have a condition. He wants to bring Goku along. Goku's been his rival recently, and Goku's been around for a good chunk of his life. Since Goku has surpassed his Earthling rivals, he's been in a weird spot where none of them could really challenge him, but also Yulong was still too strong for him. So Yulong wants to pay it forward. This way he could help Goku grow stronger as well. And Beerus is sure that he can make that work. Maybe a Saiyan could be an interesting rival too. It's better to have two than one after all. And it might encourage Yulong to grow even further. So yeah, he accepts it. A few months pass and eventually Yulong does end up going to Beerus' planet with Goku. And the two go back and forth between there and Earth. But before leaving there, Yulong actually picked up a new hobby back on Earth. After all this time of basically having no hobbies, he came to see that all he really did for hobbies was training and training other people. He needed something else in his life. And he remembered. He had that huge collection of funds that he got from when he was the World Tournament Champion all those years ago. It's not like he had the need to spend that. He was never a big spender, and he just lived at Kame House anyways. But something within him clicks when he thinks about this. It's like he was naturally born to be good at making money because he instantly sees something he could do with it. He gets really into investments. That's right, he becomes a day trader. Whereas Frieza obviously owned a great empire and was a pretty good businessman, Yulong here instead still finds a good way to make his money, and it feels kind of in line with what Frieza would do, while also not being what Frieza would do, aka being a genocidal tyrant that steals planets. He really likes the chaos of trading his money. It quells his boredom when he's on Earth not doing anything else. And since he has nothing to do with the money anyways, he becomes kind of a philanthropist. Mostly anonymous. He likes being low-key. He still does train Mr. Satan, but when he's on Earth, Videl and Gohan have basically gone off on their own, and of course the two became a thing together. They've grown a good amount, but they're going to train on their own now. And especially with school, they can't spend as much time on it anymore. So this is a good way for Yulong to pass the time. This really comes naturally to him. And he does make a good amount of money off it. In one of the time periods where he's actually on Beerus' planet, some people at Kame House notice the sky go dark one day. Mr. Satan wonders what's happening, but Roshi and Chaozu can immediately tell what's happening. Someone summoned Shenron, but that makes no sense at all. Who did it and why? Others across Earth notice it too, and anyone familiar with the Dragon Balls immediately knows what happened. Maybe some random person found the Dragon Balls, so maybe it's fine. But it wasn't any random person, or random group for that matter. The group that found it was actually Cooler's army. They are still around, and they found it weird that Goku was alive again. When King Cold eventually came to Earth, some of them noticed that Goku was there. From what they heard, he apparently died to Cooler before. So they began looking into it, and eventually found out about the Dragon Balls. They've always been a rumor, and this just confirmed it. So they did the best thing they could think of. They found the Dragon Balls, and used the Witch to revive Cooler. By the way, it's only one Witch because Kami is still Guardian here. They haven't been upgraded to three Wishes yet. So thankfully that's all they wish for, but then they realize, damn, they could have just revived the entire army, which would have included King Cold and all the other soldiers that died. You know what? Sorbet says it's fine. They just need Cooler. That's all. And Cooler is pretty glad to be back. He does want to prepare this time. He wants to train even further. He's sure Frieza and Kakarot have grown a lot stronger, so he might need years of training as well, because that's what they had. But he'll fully devote himself to it. No matter what, he will grow stronger and will defeat them. But only a few weeks after his revival, the Cooler Force is ambushed. There's only three assailants. They heard that Cooler was back and decided they wanted to get involved. And it's three very familiar faces. Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta. After Bobbity died, they regained control of themselves. Although, it seems like they kept some of the boost that they got from his power. They're just glad that Yulong didn't kill them. But now, Cooler's back, so obviously that's an issue. But they recently did unlock a new form, so it should help them out here. As soon as they infiltrate the base, the three of them immediately go Super Saiyan 2. Cooler gets ready to fight, and Vegeta launches at him. The two briefly battle, but it's clear that Vegeta's ahead of Cooler. Cooler has grown a bit, but he's only had a few weeks to train. And Vegeta's obviously not the strongest Saiyan. He's not on Goku's level. But with Super Saiyan 2, he actually is able to pull ahead, and he kills Cooler. With Raditz and Nappa destroying what's left of Cooler's army. 
Without even realizing it, they kind of just protected him. The three don't care about taking over an empire or anything, they just want Cooler gone. They don't want to deal with any sort of threats, which includes Frieza and Kakarot too. And killing Cooler kind of reinforces their evil nature. Like, they're not maniacs, but by this point they're still not great people. Especially with them being secluded in space with each other for so long, they're obviously still pretty chaotic. Thankfully Cooler was easy pickings. Frieza's of course on their radar, but he still seems too powerful. Especially after he defeated Boo, they realize that they're not going to be able to do anything against him. That'll have to come later. Following their space drive-by, they just leave. Nothing is left of the space, and that was the last bits of the Cooler Force. All the soldiers, scientists, everything. Everybody's gone. Well, kind of. For good measure, they blow up the planet that they're on, with the mangled body of Cooler launched into space. But he's not dead. His great durability allowed him to survive. He's unconscious and barely hanging on, but alive nonetheless. He drifts out into the emptiness of space, still surviving. Is this how Frieza felt when Cooler tried to kill him all of those years ago? Completely helpless and drifting aimlessly. He fades in and out of unconsciousness. He can't believe this happened. This might just be how he dies. But after a few days, something small latches onto him, and he wakes up on a nearby moon. He's in a crater, but not a normal crater. It's like he actually landed here purposefully. The crater below him is just missing a little bit of material. In his fight with the Saiyans, he lost his legs and one of his arms. But now they're back. Almost like the material below him got turned into these parts. At first he's confused, but then the data goes into his head. He was saved by the big Getty star. And he's been repaired. This is the birth of Mecha Cooler. Not completely metal. Cooler himself is actually still alive, but with the big Getty star, he could probably make clones of himself. Metal coolers. This will be fun. The Universe 6 tournament happens a lot earlier than normal, since everything else has happened earlier. They pretty quickly select a team. Goku, Yulong, Tenshinhan, Krillin, and Mr. Saiyan. Obviously, they have other people they could have recruited too. Chaozu, Gohan, Videl, Yamcha, even Roshi. Maybe even Goten, who I haven't mentioned much here, but he's still here. But they have a pretty good setup here. The first person fighting is Mr. Satan versus Batamo, and Mr. Satan actually wins this fight. He does still bluff about his power because he's obviously not the strongest in the group, but the difference here is he actually is strong. Thanks to training under Yulong, he's powerful. He knows how to use Ki. He's not even the strongest of the Earthlings, but he's at least close to them. Probably having as much physical power as someone like Chaozu who also is stronger in the scenario, obviously. Chaozu is actually in the stands watching, and he's glad to see Mr. Satan doing so well. He spent a lot of time with him at Kame House, and is glad to see this growth. Obviously, Yulong's really happy too. Then, Mr. Satan fights Frost. This guy looks just like Yulong, at least how he used to look like. He doesn't use that first form anymore. He fights Frost in his first form, but knows he probably has more power. And then Frost goes into his assault form and wins that way. The next fight is Yulong versus Frost. Frost goes back into his first form, and Yulong goes to his first form too. Frost finds it strange. Why is he holding back? Well, Yulong assumes he's holding back, so until Frost shows his full power, he's gonna hold back his full power as well. Yulong easily is ahead of Frost here. So, Frost then goes into his final form. So, Yulong goes back into his final form. Of course, one-shotting Frost. But the second he one-shots Frost, he feels strange. Frost is knocked out of the ring and then Yulong goes unconscious. He got poisoned and didn't even realize it. Well, not until after the fact. But you know, it kind of makes sense that Frost is evil. Yulong knows who he once was supposed to be, and it looks like Frost might have had a similar upbringing. He seems good on the surface, but unlike Yulong, it's an act. It's like facing a ghost of his former self. When it's revealed later on that Frost had poison, which is why Yulong lost, Mr. Satan declares that's why he also lost. It actually wasn't the reason, but hey, it's a good way to save face. Goku's up next against Vegeta. He's really excited to showcase his new forms. First Super Saiyan God, then Super Saiyan Blue, but none of them work against Vegeta. Not a great first impression, but he finds out how to get Vegeta out of the ring. Then facing Kaba, interested to see another Saiyan. But his godly forms are overkill, so he only can use his base form and Super Saiyan. Even Super Saiyan's kind of overkill though. Of course he wins this battle. Next up he faces Hit. He's really bummed out because here he's able to use Super Saiyan Blue again, but it doesn't really do much against Hit. Goku is able to predict Hit's moves. But again, this is earlier on in the story. Plus, he didn't get the extra three years of training in the time chamber. Yulong didn't go in with him, and he didn't decide to go in in the first place. Not to mention the time chamber was never upgraded. Point being, Goku is understandably weaker here than the actual Universe 6 tournament, but in terms of this point in the story, he's way stronger than he should be. It's just that for this tournament, it's not enough. Especially without Blue Kaioken, so he loses against Hit. Ten and Krillin then have to fight. They've grown a lot stronger and have some pretty impressive showings, but they're not going to do anything against Hit, obviously. Then, Mr. Satan goes back up, declaring that he wants to go last because it feels like he has a stomachache. That poison might still be in effect, which is weird because Yulong feels fine. Maybe Mr. Satan got a higher dose. So, Yulong faces Hit, and he's able to win here with his Jade form. This is a really good showcase of his power because this is the first time he fights an opponent on his level. At least close to it. He is ahead of Hit. But there's no one else that was really able to challenge his form. Goku's getting kind of close. Super Saiyan Blue is strong, but he still has a long way to go. The only other person he ever fought in this form is Beerus, who is way ahead of him, obviously. So he doesn't end this fight right away because he actually wants to have fun here. 
but he's able to predict Hit's moves, and the combination of his power, his strategies, and his martial arts mind, that'll help him win here, with Beerus being nice enough to restore Earth in Universe 6. There's another passage of time here. Now we're in Age 779, right before when Resurrection F is supposed to take place. Obviously, that doesn't happen here. Well, kind of it does, I guess. More so, Resurrection C. Nothing's happened so far, and no one ever figured out what Shenron was used for. The Saiyans found it really weird that Cooler was back. They don't know how he came back in the first place, but they never really questioned it. They assumed maybe he just survived against Frieza and somehow got healed. They could have sworn he died, but probably not. Maybe they were just wrong. But now they're sure he's dead. Vegeta was the one to kill him, and he knows he finished the job. Obviously he didn't. Cooler escapes death once more. And after all these years have passed, he feels like he's ready. He's trained. His regular body has cybernetic parts, but he can clone himself infinitely as well. And the big Getty star really does help him. And Cooler's completely in control here. It's not like in the Metal Cooler movie where it's just like a small piece of him being controlled by the big Getty star. Cooler actually has most of his body. His whole brain is intact. This is just a cyborg Cooler. But the big Getty star gave him some great abilities. First of all, regeneration. Granted, it's mechanical, but still, regeneration. It gives him adaptive growth. It's a perfect combination. His great physical power and advanced technology. The big Getty star has really helped him train and grow. He knew Frieza was born as a mutant, and he's just naturally gifted, but this gives him the boost and strength he needs. He doesn't know how strong Frieza is now, but knowing how quickly he should have grown, Cooler thought it might take decades to catch up, solely from his own hard work. But the big Getty star rapidly accelerated him. Not to mention, he's unlocked a new form as well, and he's sure that Frieza's gonna love it. Plus, he's gonna face an entire army of metal coolers. That'll be fun. He'll be sure to find those Saiyans again as well, but Yulong's the first priority. As for that other Saiyan on Earth, the one that Frieza's friends with, he was fodder to Cooler before, and he'll be fodder again. Cooler sets out to find his brother once more. And with that, we end off here for now. What'd you guys think about this part, and what's gonna happen next? Leave your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel and shows me you want to see more like this. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.